Welcome. Hello. It's powerful nonsense. Time. I cannot believe it. This has been. I've been away doing a theatre show for the last month. So the last few episodes that you've been listening to slash watching have been were recorded like a Ages month ago. ago. Maybe even more than a month ago. So it feels weird. I feel so, like we haven't podcasted in like months. I think it has yeah, been a month anyway. Def- definitely a month. Maybe even longer. So we might be a little bit rusty today. And it looks like I've probably been in the Bahamas while you've been acting, <laughs> well, which is the, where I've got my shirt, I've got a very jazzy shirt on today. You've been living. The, I've been working my ass off. You've been living the. I've been life. laying, laying in the sun, drinking cocktails, cocktails. with a little the umbrella. entrepreneurial lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Or so they say. Yeah, except it's. It's it wasn't. Bollocks. It wasn't that. I was in my back garden, <laughs> reading the book, and it's actually been quite warm in London. So yeah. So so yeah. So there might be a little bit of. Uh, of rustiness today yes. to the podcasting, so I apologise in advance. You, they probably might not notice it anyway. We tend to <laughs> We're always rusty. <laughs> rusty is our default <laughs> setting. So we, actually, we might be even better today. Hopefully. We've had the rest at <laughs> yeah, least. Yeah, rest. Well. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so episode 113. Dang. Is that 13 lucky or unlucky? Well, it's not Friday today. True. It was so actually Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th just gone. Yeah. We survived it. So, yeah, well, I'm still here. Cool. Touch wood. There's no wood. <laughs> you ain't touching that wood, I've that's got, for sure. I've got glass and fabric. That's all i got. Never mind. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're talking today about having the courage to start. Yeah, we should probably intro ourselves as well. Just in case over yes. all that time people have forgotten who we are. Who we are. <laughs> <laughs> and also for any new listeners. So I am yes. Wayne Ingram, actor. Oh, I was going to jump in straight away. Oh, sorry. See, that was a part of the rust. It's like, yeah. go. <laughs> Change, changing it up. Exactly. So yeah, I'm Wayne Ingram, actor. And I am Jemmy Odis, not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so we are the Powerful Nonsense crew. Mm-hmm. I keep saying that. Like, well, we don't really have, cool. it's just us two, so it's like a pair. Yeah. It's not really a crew. And, and I'm the loser wearing the, the branded t-shirt whilst you're wearing your... Jazzy, I just need a straw hat and I'll be <laughs> fitting right in. But no, it's all good. Thanks for branding yourself out. It's all T-shirts right. available. Just a reminder, yeah. Powerfulnonsense.com. Check it out. And we've got a new light. And it's a we bit... have a new light. And the worst thing is it's so hot in here, so I feel like we're going to be like shining <laughs> off our faces. But Yeah, to those n- listening on the podcast, Jem has got his glow going on. Healthy glow. Because it's this bright white light, and I'm here with my bright white skin. Yeah. My Luckily, you Celtic don't. blood, <laughs> which literally means you're reflecting the light of your face <laughs> onto, onto you. my face. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is our first attempt at proper good lighting on the YouTube mm. channel. So I think it looks great from what I've seen on the I think, camera. I think I look great. Definitely. So <laughs> I think we're good to go. Good to go. Although I'm sweating, so luckily you cannot yeah. smell us. <laughs> smell a vision. Kicking up a, a hold, fuss. Hold fire. <laughs> So anyway, so yes. we're talking about having the courage to start today, mm-hmm. as it pertains to like entrepreneurship or any kind of Endeavor. projects that, or ventures that you want to kind of start. Um, and it's a big problem, I think, for a lot of people of that moment of going, okay, I've got this great idea, but I kind of want to, I don't know, I don't yeah. know where to start, I don't know if I want to start, and it's kind of that, that resistance to kind of get the ball rolling. Yeah, I think so many entrepreneurs, especially, you kind of love the idea about like getting your business started. Mm-hmm. But I think probably most people end up like procrastinating that time for years and years and uh-huh. years. They're reading all the books, they're buying all the courses, uh-huh. they're talking to entrepreneurs, but then they have actually never just hit that, mm-hmm. hit, push the trigger and actually take action on that, mm-hmm. starting their business. So we thought this would be a good subject to talk about yes, today. I think so. Um, and I think a lot of people as well, they're kind of in that position of kind of going, oh, yeah, but I don't know if my idea is good enough and mm-hmm. things like that. And um, as Gary V says, Ooh. Gary V, bit of Gary Vaynerchuk, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. Uh, execution is the game. Mm-hmm. Ideas are worth shit, yeah. as he says. And it's all about how you execute. So we're going to talk through a few things today about how we think you can kind of encourage yourself to get the ball rolling. I think as well, people like blow up like starting a business to be something like bigger than it uh-huh. actually is. Like yeah, it's definitely. actually not that. I mean, I used to be the same like back in the day. You think, oh my God, you're going to go out on your own. You're going to start a business. It's all serious. I think people need to like just dumb it down and make it seem like actually it's not that much of a big deal actually. It's yeah. not a big difference maybe having a job. It's just that you're going to now do stuff on your own. You're going to be the person mm-hmm. in charge. And I think that's what I think makes people actually hold back from actually starting is I think uh-huh. they blow up to be so important and then they're scared to tell people that they're starting a business and then suddenly you put all this kind of like false pressure on yourself for no reason and then that's what 
then you just don't know where to go next. You're afraid, okay, if I do start this, what if I fail? What if people, if I tell people I've got a business, then they're going to be asking me questions about mm-hmm. it, et cetera, et cetera. And then it just gets a bit too stressful. And then that's why you kind of hold off because you're kind of like waiting for things to be perfect. You're waiting yeah. to be like that person to ask you the question. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, I've got loads of clients. I'm making thousands of pounds per <laughs> month. You want to already be at that level where you yeah. feel comfortable to tell people before yeah. you actually put it out there. And I think that's... That's what a lot of people kind of hold back from starting, really. Yeah, I think it's that it's that kind of that safety net thing, mm-hmm. where people have got that safety net because they've got employment, mm-hmm. and so it's like, well, I don't want to get rid of that safety net. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what holds a lot of people back. Is like, I think the first question that people think and ask themselves when they start a business is, well, where's my money coming from? How am I going to pay my rent? Mm-hmm. And that's usually the thing that kind of really holds people back. But if you go back to one of our previous episodes, which we released only a few weeks ago. Uh, how to become freelance? Uh, freelancer. What's the title? Something like that. Something like that. How to quit your job and be your freelancer. <laughs> I mean, it sounds a lot better. Than you know title. what we were saying about Rust? <laughs> <laughs> we will link it somewhere. We will link it. It'll be in the video. It'll be in the show notes. Yes. Uh, so check them out. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash one one three. Boom. Yeah, and I think it is is that idea again. It's like if you're starting a business. It doesn't mean that you have to go all in. I know some people say that's it. Just quit the job and jump straight in. We're kind of like against that approach. Yeah. We're like test the waters first. You can make a little bit of money on the side first and then you can see actually, could this money replace my actual salary? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good way to think about it. Uh huh. It's funny actually because I was reading an article about actors and where actors go wrong. And one of the pieces of advice on there was <laughs> essentially, quit your day job, go all in. And I'm like, <laughs> the average actor earns about £5,000 a year. Yeah. That's the average actor, bearing in mind the people at the top end are earning millions and the average actor is earning five grand a year. Probably not the best piece of advice to take. So, yeah, I'm totally against the remove the safety net. I think have it. Give yourself that time to build something up. It also gives you a chance to test it because if if in four or five years you've still got the safety net, you probably need to adjust a few things. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, just have that safety net. Keep it ticking over and then just slowly, slowly transfer from more... Like, start cutting your hours if you can and then upping the amount of time you put into business. So. Definitely. I think one thing that we need to think about, especially when people like starting out or finding the courage to start, is really the psychological game behind it. Yeah. Totally. I think a lot of the time people like hold back from the starting because of all the technicalities. But I think in your head, it's like really important to kind of figure out the life you want to lead. And I think that's totally. the thing. Like, I think you really need to have a convincing vision, which means mm-hmm. your work, you don't mind getting in the dirt, like Gary Vee says, you don't mind doing the hard stuff. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people who are starting out are too busy thinking about, oh, the money and the, mm-hmm. the freedom. But I also think you just need to step back and think about, like, what is the lifestyle you want to lead? Yeah, totally. And I think, for me especially, kind of how my lifestyle has changed since I now work for myself or we run a business, we've got powerful nonsense. The way now I live, I can't think of going back to a nine-to-five because I've totally now changed how you. I value my days. I'm totally with you. I, I've said for a long time, I mean, I've still got the day job. I've still got my safety net, though I have dropped my shifts recently. Um, but even that day job is is fairly, I'm kind of left to my own devices and I'm kind of there because somebody needs to be there as opposed to because mm-hmm. I'm actively, there's mm-hmm. loads of work for me to do. I mean, there is stuff for me to do, but it's like minimal. Um, and I've said for a long time, you know, I've seen too much now. Mm-hmm. I have literally been unplugged from the matrix and I don't, I don't want to go back in yeah. because again, like uh, today, like this morning, uh, we were meant to be recording earlier, but, um, the certain things had to be done around the studio, <laughs> the, studio. the studio, uh, in inverted commas, um, <laughs> which meant that we couldn't record early. So instead we were like, right, let's just take some time out, just catch up, have a coffee, sat in the sun, sat had, in some sun had some coffee. Um, and we know, okay, yeah, we've got to work to make sure that we get all the work done. That is, it's not just like freedom and you just don't <laughs> do anything, but you have that control to kind of go, oh, okay, well, we can delay for a couple of hours and it's not going to affect anything. We're just going to finish a little bit later. Yeah. And and whereas, like I, I say, like with employment, the thing about employment is it's, it's like entrepreneurship. It's like working for yourself, except you're not working for yourself because someone else is making the rules. Mm-hmm. Um I always try and think of my employment as well. I am selling you my time. Um, and and so that's what I'm selling you. That's the service I'm selling you. Whereas, like, when you're working for yourself, like, if we decide later in the week, oh, it's tennis time, we yeah. can work around the fact that we want to do that. And I think that's the freedom that entrepreneurship gives. Like, don't be under the illusion that 
<laughs> you're not going to ever work. You've still yeah. got to work, but you have control over when you work. Yeah, if yeah. you want to work from 11 p.m. till 3 in the morning, yeah, yeah. you can do that. Like, And I think that's the thing because I have a lot of friends who are like 9 to 5ers and they're like, oh, well, I see your Snapchat, you're playing tennis and you're going for coffee. And I'm like, yeah, but you didn't see last night when I was uh-huh. editing from maybe 9 till 11 just because I felt like it. Precisely. And I think that's It's the... not like you're on the dole and like, somebody's <laughs> like, yeah. the government's paying for you to live that lifestyle. You're having to work uh-huh. for that lifestyle style but i think people kind of the nine to fivers go oh, hang on something's not right here mm-hmm. like you're, you must be cheating the system and it's not you're just you've taken yourself out of the system and that's what i think i think the key point here is just you need to de- you need to decide how you want to live and i think that gives you the courage mm-hmm. to start if you kind of step back and say do you know what i do want to have the freedom that in the afternoon i can meet my friends or i do want mm-hmm. to be able to play tennis or i do want to just be like to my girlfriend we let's go on a random holiday i'm free i don't have to book it off stuff like that and i think that kind of then makes that vision seem so appealing. You think, yes, I'm going to have this kind of freedom. But then you are going to have, like I say, it's always a balance. It's a trade-off. So like yeah. you are going to have to have those days where you are working super hard, oh, yeah. maybe two, three days in a row. But then you know you have the choice at the end of the week, I'm just going to go on a holiday or I'm going to take these two days off uh-huh. and stuff like that. So I think when you have the vision there, it kind of gives you that courage. You think, yeah, you know what? I really want that lifestyle. Uh-huh. And I think, it, like you say, it isn't until you've tasted it taste that freedom <laughs> till you're like oh my god like I, there literally is no way that i can go yeah, on like I in couldn't. my head nine to five does not seem it will not fit with the lifestyle or the way that i want to live now yeah. and so there is like no going back yeah totally totally so yeah so i kind of decided like what that lifestyle that you want is you might enjoy the nine to five day and that's fine like actually one of the things i'm pining after at the moment is just being able to just have a weekend mm-hmm. every week because my weekend is like midweek yeah because that's when the day job giving me a little bit of time off is midweek. And it sometimes is really a really hard battle because my housemates are at home, they're chilling, and I'm in my room doing work, churning stuff out. Um, so, like, for me, yeah, I would quite like the Monday to Friday. I don't want the 9 to 5, though, but I'd like mm-hmm. the Monday to Friday week. So just kind of work out what that lifestyle that you want is and kind of it's about go working your way backwards from there. Like, mm-hmm. what are the things that you want to tick off your bucket list and, and just work back from there? I actually started reading um, the guy from Nerd Fitness. You heard oh, about yeah. Nerd yeah, Fitness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this as a concept um, where he's basically gamified his life. It kind of uses a lot of the Tim Ferriss kind of s- stuff, um, but it's uh, the book is called Level Up Your Life, I think. I started reading that recently and basically the way he's done it is he's gone, okay, if I could live the coolest lifestyle ever, what would be the things that I would do? Mm -hmm. And then he's literally just gone, right, well, in order to do that, I need to do that and do that and just move backwards. That's Mm -hmm. all you have to do. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it is. Then you kind of figure out what kind of clients you need, how many people Mm -hmm. do you need, what kind of, how much you want to price your service so that you can have that freedom. And I think it just works out so so good for you, really. Mm -hmm. Another thing I wanted to sort of touch on before we go to a quick break, because time yes. is going quick and I forgot how quick <laughs> time goes in a podcast. Oh, it always seems to go so But quick. I think as well, you just got to be inspired by the journey. Like don't go into yeah. business for an end goal. Yeah, yeah, you have your lifestyle in mind, but you don't want to kind of get stuck thinking that, okay, once get to that end point, I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. I think what you need to be is like, okay, doing this is inspiring. You see the vision, you're excited to do it. I think yeah. people kind of procrastinate because they're not kind of convinced or they're kind of, mm-hmm. they're looking at the end goal. And so it's too... It's too scary to actually go after. Uh Whereas I think if you can actually be inspired just with the little things like the starting, getting the website, start maybe putting content out there, maybe get your first customer, Mm -hmm. get your first customer or your first client. I think these things are exciting. I think that's why you have to kind of like the longer you're in entrepreneurship, the more you build up momentum because the actual journey is inspiring. The next thing comes up. And the more the vision becomes clear. Yeah, I think so too. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so let's just take a quick break now because I've got something I want to go into. But I'll save it for after the break because I think so you're going to open up a can of worms. And not so much a can of worms, but it's just something that I did recently that I think could be really useful. So stick around. We'll be back. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Right, guys, we need to take a moment. Thank our sponsor. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're done. No, <laughs> uh, no University of Northampton. My God. This show would not be happening right now if it wasn't for them, I don't think. Certainly not to this level. Not to this high quality quality level. So huge thank you to (laughs) University of Northampton, our old uni. Exactly. So they taught us the ways. (laughs) They taught us the ways of the force. Um, But yeah, no, honestly, like the thing that I think we love about Northampton Uni over other unis, apart from the fact that we went there, (laughs) right, 
is the fact. With our limited experience of other universes. With our limited experience. No, but I mean, I know, from, I from know. my perspective, Go. wait, let me finish, let me finish. Zip. <laughs> the University of Northampton is like, it, it's about, their, their whole kind of thing is about social enterprise. So it's not just about going there and getting a degree and leaving and hopefully getting a job. It's about going there, getting your degree, but also learning how to set up not just a business, but a social business. So it's a business that's out there to make good, positive social impact and make good social change. And the university has won so many awards for it, it so much recognition in the social enterprise space. Governments are always talking to them and stuff about how they can improve their social enterprise strategy. Honestly, if you're into social enterprise, if you're into possibly setting up a business, these guys are the uni to check out. So if you want to check them out, northampton.ac.uk, check them out. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. So guys, we want to talk to you about New Media Europe. NMEU. NMEU. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag NMEU. They'll love that. Uh, we are so excited for this event. Like, honestly, I don't think we ever thought we would be at New Media Expo. No. But we're gonna be. Yes, we we're are. gonna be. We're not just gonna be there as guests. <laughs> we're gonna be there as guests. We're gonna be on a panel. Yeah. On about a, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. And we're gonna be hosting the new Media Europe Awards. What's gonna happen if we actually win an award? <gasps> <gasps> Who knows? We will have to. I, will, I will give you the award, and then you can pass give it back, it back over to, to me, that's and then the we'll one. do it. That's how it works. We'll work. figure it out. But yeah, so we're hosting awards. Never thought that was going to happen. And no, we're gonna never thought I was going to be a host, so you're going to have to give me some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you into the the training boot camp. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be there. So uh, tickets are selling quite quick. Very quick. Very actually. quick. I mean, some like, are, some levels are sold out. Some levels are sold out completely. In fact, I believe there's only one type of ticket left. And I think there's only 100 of those type of tickets left. So you got to get on it, right? But if you want those tickets, just have a look. Go to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Check it out. What is NMEU, Wayne? <laughs> you know what, the New Media Expo? Yeah, what is it? Oh, we, we didn't did really... this last time. Do people know New Media Expo? Oh, Maybe just a little assume. bit. All right, all right, all right, all right. So... The New Media Expo is like it's like a conference type convention type thing for all those people producing new media. So podcasts, YouTubers, uh, short videos, short films, documentaries, all that sort of stuff. So anything to do with like essentially content. online digital content. That's what it's all about. It's a big get together. It's happening in London uh, next month, mid June. Um, this is happening. We're going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Dan Miller's going to be there from 48 Days. Uh, he's like... Many other specialists in their areas. Yes, many, many, many specialists. Including about us. Many different things. There's going to be workshops <laughs> about how you can set up your new media businesses and things like that. So much good stuff. Honestly, it's going to be great. It's all on the website to see, to be honest. All on the website. So yeah, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. That's our link will take you straight to all of the breakdown of what you can expect and a little button to register and buy your tickets cool check it out welcome back hello so we're talking about having the courage to start we covered a few things in the first half of the episode you can do it uh, <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah so i alluded to something i kind of wanted to talk about mm -hmm. in the second half which uh, is which is basically i did this exercise uh, a couple of weeks ago. You did exercise? No, not exercise. Oh, okay. An exercise. I was going to say, I was just going to fall uh, over or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've been okay. running around the rehearsal room for the last month. Go you. I'm, I'm ripped. You can't see it, but I'm ripped. <laughs> Ripping out of your clothing or ripped in general? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of both. Anyway. No, not both. Just ripped. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I did this exercise. And uh, basically, the reason I did it was because... My goal this year is to try and get much more freelance mm -hmm. in my work because I kind of want that freedom that we've talked about a little bit more and things like that. So I'm trying to build up that freelance stuff. So I was intrigued as to just how far away from that goal mm -hmm. I am and how much of the different revenue streams and things is already bringing versus how much more I need to find. So I, I basically broke down each little individual revenue stream, took out the day job mm -hmm. just to see what the difference was and how much I actually needed to make. And actually... It wasn't all that far away. Mm -hmm. I literally just kind of did this 
diagram, this flowchart diagram of where sounds all this money is coming. Sounds pretty fancy, Wayne. Sounds yeah. pretty fancy. And use my minimal viable living, which we've done an episode on as well, as a uh-huh. kind of uh, uh, earmark as to where I need to get to minimum um, versus then how much to sort of get a comfortable lifestyle. And it really is not that unobtainable. And the point I'm trying to make is that I think sometimes when we're kind of battling with that, oh, well, I want to get this idea off the ground, but I don't know if it's feasible. I don't know how much money I'm going to be able to make and mm-hmm. where, where my rent's going to come from. Uh, I think we kind of, in our mind, we make that goal much bigger yeah, yeah. than it actually needs to be because we put so much pressure on it and so much like, I need a roof over my head. Or if I have a business, I need to be turning over at least a million pound a year or something right. like that. You feel like you need a lot more, but actually all you're doing is trying to replace that income. Because like we say, your business is there to help you live the life you want. Right. Not the other way around. It's not to take your life away by becoming, to- well, the way we see it, we don't want to be totally inundated with work. We exactly. want to just live the way exactly. through our values, what we value. And really. I actually worked out that I could probably, if I charge the right amount for my services... Uh, which I don't think was actually unreasonable pricing it either when I worked out. It's pretty much what I charge now for things, which you know is not yeah. not unreasonable. Um, I reckon I could actually fulfil my weekly needs in, in about three days. Mm-hmm. Three days work. And then have the remaining four days of the week to do what I want. So I've doubled my weekend, essentially. Yeah, I think a lot of the problems that people have as well is that they think that if I go out on my own, then I'm going to have to... Sp- price like my businesses or my services in the same way that I was getting paid in my employment Mm -hmm. I think it's such a massive delusion that people have because actually now you're a business person you can charge what you want it's up to you and it's about finding those decent clients Mm -hmm. who you want to work with who see the value in what you offer which is another important point it's just to make sure that you do value what you have to offer I think it's hard to go into something or have the courage to start if really you don't have the skills or you have nothing Mm -hmm. to offer you've just been doing I don't know what kind of job you've been doing but you don't know about the industry you don't have deep knowledge on it you don't actually have something to give and so maybe then for you yeah it's going to be hard to start because you maybe don't value or you don't have skill sets we've Mm -hmm. talked about this there's that very thin line between the credibility dilemma not thinking you're good enough or actually you generally aren't good enough and so you don't have the skills and so I think it is really important that which is why it's good just to test out on a few clients initially. Can you deliver value for someone? It's like with me, I still had my nine to five job and I started working with people mm-hmm. on the side here and there. And before long, they were paying me quite good money to do what I was doing, photography, filming. And suddenly I'm like, wow, yes, I, it was, it, for me, it was an internal insecurity thing. Whereas sometimes for people, you actually, they just don't have the ability. So right. you've got to figure out where do you lie? Is it that you just aren't confident? You have, see, you have value inside you. You're just not confident currently to put it out there and so sometimes that's where you need to gauge it with clients yeah definitely and i think you know as you kind of alluded to like there's this um illusion when you're stepping out of the the nine to five the day job that's paying you an hourly rate like um yeah particularly if you're not on like a salaried job as well Mm -hmm. um you're kind of calculating your time by the hour and really you're not if you really break it down to per hour you probably it's very rare probably I would imagine, unless you're in a high-paying job, that you're going to be earning more than ten pounds an hour. Well, I think you probably. I don't know what it, how it works. Out. Not much more, I would yeah. have thought. Anyway, um, t- between ten and fifteen pounds an hour, I would 10, say, 20, unless you're on, on what I'd consider a more high-paying job. Um, but you know, average average earner's not going to be earning much more than I that. I think like, average earner is like thirty grand a year in it's, London. They say, uh, but it's I think twenty-five like... grand. I think for the UK. Oh, okay. Um, so it's not going to be huge, mm-hmm. huge amounts. Whereas then. I think if you, uh, another exercise I did about six months ago, it was really interesting. I think it was Michael Hyatt suggested it. Um, if you sit down and you work out how much you'd like to earn that year, then reverse engineer it, work out how much you're going to have to earn per month in order to get that salary, how much you're going to have to earn per hour or per day or per hour or whatever, and break it down. We obviously say don't charge per hour hour. but (laughs) when you're calculating how much you are going to charge it's something you do have to factor in Mm -hmm. is how much time am i going to be putting into this project Mm -hmm. so you do have to factor in to make sure it is worth your time Mm -hmm. um and i actually calculated that um for me to earn kind of where i want to be and where i think my value is for each hour i put in it has to be more than 12 pounds an hour which I think is which most people wouldn't even low. charge. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, low. it is low. It is low, <laughs> and obviously I do charge more than that. Yeah. But but like that's the like the bottom line minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me to earn what I think I'm, I can be worth. Yes. For the year, and so a lot of people wouldn't even charge twelve pound an hour. <laughs> yeah, which I think is shocking. I think that is a massive confidence thing with people. Yeah. I think like I've seen people who charge like 
eight hundred dollars for an hour. I've yeah. seen people that have charged thousands of pounds for an hour of their time, and I think it does come down to if you know your value, you can charge ridiculous, yeah. you can, not ridiculous amounts because you are backing it up with the actual right. what you deliver. You actually do what you mm-hmm. say, and it it means that much. It's worth that much to the person buying. Mm-hmm. So again, I don't want to get into the money side. We have no, spoke about this before, but I do think it's kind of just you'll see that actually through entrepreneurship and doing stuff and you knowing that you deliver value that you can actually charge those higher prices, mm-hmm. which means you free up so much more time. You're buying back Absolutely. that time. Yeah. But I know we have covered a lot of this in yeah. other episodes. Yeah. But yeah, just consider all of those factors when you are kind of coming up with, with your prices structure to go back to the point that I was making, you will then realize that actually what you need to earn is really not that far out of reach yeah. at all. Um, unless you've got a really luxurious lifestyle, in which case you should probably look at that <laughs> first before you <laughs> consider whether or not you're going to start, right? But it's for the average person to live an average lifestyle, it's really not that unreasonable to, to try and attain it at all, not provided at all. you've got the skills and, the, and can provide the value. But we don't want to be average, though. We don't want to be average. <laughs> Why be mediocre when you can be great? <laughs> so they say. <laughs> but um, another thing I wanted to say as well, especially in terms of finding the courage to start, is actually I think people hold back because they don't see a result quickly. Yeah. And I think the idea is that actually if you want to get that little impetus of like excitement, it is make a little bit of money doing the thing you want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think there's so many ways out there where, I don't know, if you're somebody who wants to sell jewellery, just getting your stuff out there, you get that first purchase on Etsy or you find one client who wants to do wants you to do photography for them, mm-hmm. or you find someone like yourself, Wayne, who does like voice, you help somebody with voice yeah. coaching. Mm-hmm. I think that's so important to actually see that what you are, what you want to do actually can bring back money. Because I yeah. do think people get so tied into starting that they, they do everything else, but then there's no cash flow ever. Yeah, And I think that's obviously not a wise way to go because I think unless it seems uh, feasible, which a lot of the time means actually you can make money for it, mm-hmm. then I think the quicker you can actually get that small victory, that small yeah. win, a little bit of oh, cash totally. into your account, I think it literally just lights something up for you that uh-huh. <laughs> lights it right up for you and then suddenly you feel that this is possible. Uh-huh. Somebody's paid me. I definitely can get someone else to pay me and then it kind of snowballs. Uh-huh. So you have to really celebrate those small wins. And the thing is as well, what, what I found is is um, with whatever it is that you're you're selling – for you, it's some expertise that you've probably had for quite a while. It's it's just basic stuff for you, right? But it's the fact that it's basic stuff for you might be expert level stuff for someone else. And so it seems so easy what you're doing because you're kind of in this cognitive bias. It seems so easy and then somebody's willing to pay you for it. It feels like you're printing money. Do you know what I mean? Well, Sometimes. In, in some ways, I know when it came to me when I like raised my prices, I was like, wow, someone would actually pay me. So you're not... I don't ever think, I think it's a switch. You might not feel like it's, it's a weird metaphor to use that you're printing money because at the end of the day, you are delivering to that person yeah. the value way up there. So you're actually oh, absolutely. getting paid a lot like believe, believe in, in the value that you're you're selling. But I think what I'm saying is, is that because you've got that cognitive bias. Yeah, I just don't want people to feel that maybe they feel like they're cheating that by doing oh. entrepreneurship so the money's coming easy because that's the yeah, yeah. most delusional. You don't yeah, want to yeah. get no, caught in No, that's there. not what I'm saying at all. Yeah. But what I mean is, is because what I'm saying is, I may be kind of, approached it the wrong way around (laughs) what i'm saying is is because you sometimes undervalue your expertise naturally that first time that you kind of get that that money through i'm talking yeah that first experience yeah is that's the moment you go oh shit yeah like i'm I'm utilizing these expertise that i've always had and that and that first moment feels like a a printing money moment i think that to to develop it into a business yeah. And to an enterprise, that's when the real hard work begins. Yeah, yeah. I think the only reason why what you're saying there is that when people, are, obviously most people's experience, you probably listen to this, you want to go into entrepreneurship, your gauge of how much you get pri- paid is based on probably an employer. Yeah. And you've got to remember that employer is a business, so they actually yeah. want to make profit out of your skills. Sure. And so when you reverse engineer and you go back to actually what is my core value, because uh-huh. obviously you're bringing value, like my sister's a hairdresser, I know she brings in over £10,000 to that hairdresser per month. But actually, how much you get paid might be two or three grand per month. Right. And so she, right. as a physical person, she has the capability, if she had those clients, to earn 10 grand a month. Yes. And I think that's the way you got to see it, that actually you are now getting paid your full value because you've done the hard right. work. which is kind of what I'm trying to say as which well. Which I know what you're saying, but yeah. it's just you've got to be careful how you word it because I think people I think yeah. people do think, oh, well, entrepreneurship, yes, big bucks, and it's dangerous Oh, yeah, way like to it's, not, it's not just uh, press play and mm-hmm. then you earn money. Mm-hmm. But what I mean is that that initial... That initial first celebratory moment where you get paid Mm -hmm. for something that you know that you're good at and you but but uh to other people would be 10 times more work because they don't have the level of expertise you have 
that's that moment where you kind of what I'm saying is celebrate that moment yeah. and and hook onto that feeling mm-hmm. because that's then what can drive you because then you kind of start having the bigger picture of mm-hmm. kind of going well hang on if I can do that like I had it with my coaching mm-hmm. last year if I was going well hang on if I can make that amount off of one client which is utilizing my expertise my three years of training like it's not easy work but for me I've done it for so long that it's not mm-hmm. it's not as difficult for me as it would be for someone else. Um, if I can make that much money off of one client, Mm -hmm. if I can get just three more, I can pay my bills. Yeah. yeah. And so, and that's kind of what I was alluding to of Mm -hmm. that moment where you go, oh, hang on, whilst working for somebody else, I'm not earning my full value. Yeah. Which means that for what could have been five hours work in the day job, I could get paid that same amount for one hour's work because I'm delivering the value. And so that's kind of, it's that transition. That's what I feel like I'm trying to defend myself now. (laughs) It's all good. For the printing money thing, but that's kind of why. I I think a lot of it when you're going out there is breaking down your own sort of money mindset that you have and knowing that you probably have a lot more value than you are currently getting paid for. And that's why entrepreneurship is appealing or freelancing Mm -hmm. because you can charge those bigger numbers, which makes, and then if you get that first bigger pay that you thought, wow, I never knew somebody would actually pay me this much for my service that's going to give you the courage to keep going and actually build up that client base. Absolutely, definitely. But yeah, don't be under any illusion. It's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not going to be easy. Well, that's why you work for a company is because you don't have to do the hard work of finding the right. customers. But actually nowadays, the tools are available that you can actually reach out to people quite easily. And I think that's where people didn't go into entrepreneurship because it felt like, well, how do you get a customer? Do you have to print brochures? Do you have to right. advertise on TV? Whereas nowadays you can be a small business who actually finds your clients just through Instagram or right. you run a Facebook ad for five pound a week and suddenly you get a few clients. So right. the possibilities are out there now. Right. So the bit that people were afraid of, the customer getting the customers is now something that social media has made super easy. Right. And, and, and like, again, talking about the coaching thing, like, yes, that first client, I had that first client, um, but have I managed to get another client since? Mm-hmm. No, because there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. I'm, I am admittedly procrastinating on it, kind of having this kind of issue myself <laughs> um, of kind of like, well, but how do I approach them and that yeah. sort of stuff. So I'm kind of going through this issue myself, but it's that that initial kind of it is possible yeah. then is what then starts giving you the impetus to actually get moving. That's almost like the, the starting pistol. Mm-hmm. And then... The starting pistol's gone, it goes, go! And you go, right! And then you go, shit, I better start running, kind of thing. So There's a really great quote there, um, I know Philip McKernan says, I'm just going to read it off, and he says, in the absence of clarity, take action. And I think for most people who are trying to find that courage to start, your problem is you're trying to have all the answers now. And you won't start until everything is in a, in a uh-huh. system, it's set out for you, it's why these books sell so quickly, because people want some sort of systematized way of getting to that end point. Yeah. And it's never like that. I think like you have to do, you have to just go for it. Yeah. And then the opportunities come up. The longer I've been doing my video content and doing creative content for people, suddenly someone knows somebody who goes there and there. And you, there's so many things you cannot plan for. Right. And so it's about getting started. You make that bit of money, then the opportunity starts arising. I think that's what you, you have to realize. You don't need to know all the answers before you mm-hmm. get going. You need to just go for it, and then you'll just learn as you're going. Opportunities will come up as you're going. Yeah, like Richard Branson, he famously says something to the effect of, um, I'll say yes and then work out how I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Like someone will offer me a project, and I'll go, yeah, I can do that, and then work out how to do mm-hmm. it. And I think that's a good, good way to work. Like with, again, that coaching client, I'd never done coaching before on that on a one to one basis. I'd done workshops and things, but it was like, yeah, no, I think I can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I did my research and did all the work beforehand, and now I can do it. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm all right at it. Yeah, and I just want to sort of end this and wrap this up on one final point. And we've done a whole episode on it, but I think it's really vital because I think it's a problem that a lot of people have, especially when they're starting out, is that you're just too busy comparing to other people. You're oh, kind of easy. you're killing your motivation by looking at somebody who's already probably been doing it for three to five years, ten years. And so you think, well, I'm never going to be at that level. It's like mm-hmm. we get a lot of people saying to us, oh, you've got a podcast. Tell us how you did it. Tell I want to do one. And I'm like, well, the problem is that you're comparing, you want to get into podcasts, but you're comparing yourself to John Lee Dumas. You're comparing yourself to Pat Flynn. These people have been doing it for way longer than we've been doing even. Mm. And so they want to just be like at that level straight away. And it's like, well, actually, no, you have to start really rusty. You have to start with the 10 pound headset. You need to be minimal. You need to not have the good light. Like it's Uh a constant progress, a constant adaptation. But people who want to start their business or start a podcast, 
in their head it needs to be at that level when they start and yeah. I think that's the problem everybody wants to be perfect from the get go yeah. and that's just not how it works like yeah. you're going to cut out all the fun parts all the learning all the experiences all that stuff that now we get paid to actually go and talk to people about and it's the yeah. bit that actually connects with people the most in the audience when we say yeah we were filming it in my well I was sharing a room with my brother or we actually had to wear the cheap headset and people now can relate to us because mm-hmm. we've been on that journey right and so even all our fears and so you don't want to just jump to the point of being the pro because actually then where's your story where's well, that's that it as well I mean the whole podcast has been built off of us going through this journey and the things that we've learned. Like, if we jumped straight to the top, we wouldn't have a podcast because Mm -hmm. we'd have nothing to kind of go, oh, by the way, I'm experiencing this at the moment. And it would all, it'd kind of feel really empty. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it's about that connection as well with the brand because it's getting to that point where people buy from people who they like, know and trust and all that sort of stuff. But if you haven't got that story to back it up, you're not going to get that sort or of you're, you're missing a massive market, a bit of market. And do you know what? People. The journey is the best bit, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like seeing, like we're uh, going to be at New Media Expo, doing the hosting the awards. I never, ever thought we'd be at New Media Europe mm-hmm. hosting podcasting awards, but here we are. And so it's that kind of if somebody just went, they go, "There's all the opportunity," and one go, you wouldn't appreciate it. Yeah, and you just definitely wouldn't have all that growth and experience which you now can share going forward. Yeah. So I think. Guess is there any kind of final thoughts for people to start? Um, I think really you just, just go for it. Yeah, you have to That's just go it. for it. Just jump in, get those quick wins, get around people that are maybe doing that thing or already know how to get those those wins initially. Mm-hmm. Speak to people. Like I will speak to people. I don't know when it came to my pricing of my videos. I spoke mm-hmm. to people who were pricing way higher than me, and they were like, "Just put your price up." Uh-huh. I did it, and it worked. And I was like, "Wow!" I just needed someone to tell me who who are already getting paid that price to do that, mm-hmm. and then suddenly you go. So I just think. Just go for it. You won't regret it. And if you do do it and you get the feedback and it doesn't work, then you go on to the next one. Yeah. Simples. Simples. Cool. Great. I think that was a damn fine episode, if I'm going to say so myself. It did go quick. And hopefully not too rusty as well. Cool. Hopefully. So thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, As always, please leave us an iTunes review if you're listening to the podcast. We love them reviews. Five stars or more, please. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think, any thoughts on the episode, and we will catch you 